who are the principalities? Who are these spiritual beings that are overseeing territories, nations and sometimes continents? They're slightly different than the demons that we cast out of people and drive out of people. And so today we're going to dive into this topic. I believe you're going to be really, really blessed. We're going to look at a lot of verses and so get ready to take notes. I believe this is going to be an impact to your spiritual journey and will help you to be a demon slayer and somebody who will take the gospel to all the four corners of the earth to the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's dive in first and foremost in Genesis chapter 11 verse 9. It says, therefore its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. So we see that God scattered everyone over the face of all the earth. Now we know that Tower of Babel, languages, scattering and that's where the nations were born. In fact later on we see the table of nations from there, from this incident. But I want you to notice what Deuteronomy chapter 32 gives us pretty much an insight into what happened in the spiritual realm at the Tower of Babel incident. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8 and verse 9. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance and when He divided mankind, it refers to the Tower of Babel incident we read Genesis 11 9. When He divided the mankind, He fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. But the Lord's portion is His people, Jacob His allotted inheritance. Now some of the translations, especially New King James translation, it says that He fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel instead of the sons of God. And so there's been a debate over the Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 8. But when the Dead Sea Scrolls were found and a lot of the original manuscripts were brought in, in the original manuscript it does not say the children of Israel. In fact, it even doesn't even work when this in this text. The reason why is because the children of Israel, Israel didn't even exist in the table of nations. Like in Genesis chapter 11 and 12, Israel did not exist. It was afterwards that Israel existed and God never gave children of Israel nations. They only had one nation. And so some translations say son, sons of Israel, but Israel did not exist during the time of Babel. And Israel is not listed in the table of nations, of the nations that were scattered. As well as Abraham had not received the covenant with God yet. And the Dead Sea Scrolls, they confirm that and indicate that sons of God is the accurate translation. So let's, let's read this verse again now. Like me, prior to discovery of this verse, I've never read this verse like that. It kind of opened a brand new worldview concerning the spiritual world and the unseen realm and principalities and powers that we talk about, that we see that in the scriptures and I'm, we're going to go through other scriptures. So let's read this one more time because I really want you to catch this. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when He divided the mankind, He fixed the borders of the peoples according according to the number of the sons of God. But the Lord's portion is His people, Jacob, His allotted inheritance. So God, what He did is that He divided all the nations and He put His sons in charge of these nations, okay? And then later on, God begins the nation of Israel through Abraham. God begins to develop a relationship with Abraham. In fact, right after the Babel, we see God begins to draw Abraham out and starts out of him a new people, new tribe, new nation that will be called eventually hundreds of years later they will occupy the promised land and they will be the nation of Israel and God says I'm going to oversee I'm going to my portion is going to be the nation of Israel but to his sons he gave charge oversight supervision over other nations. Now we see later on that these sons of God, these Elohims, these divine beings who were assigned to govern these nations, they became corrupt, they refused to judge, they abused those nations, they enslaved those nations and they even tried to take the nation of Israel which was the Lord's portion and seduce the nation of Israel to worship other gods. Let's look at Psalm 82 verse 1 and 2. God has taken His place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods He holds judgment. Now when you read that at first you're like whoa, in the midst of the gods, the word gods there is the word for Elohim. Elohim is another word for divine beings. That word is, is, is given for angels, even for the devil. And so Elohim speaks of just a divine being. Now 
it's even given to the Lord that God is an Elohim but God is Yahweh and there is nobody like Him meaning among the Elohims there is nobody like Him. He is unique because He is a creator and He created these spirit beings that are present in His console. So God in the midst of His console, He holds a judgment and He begins to judge His spirit sons or his divine beings that he put in charge of nations and this is what he said he says how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked and if you read later on he said you are gods meaning you are divine beings the sons of most high okay and then he says all of you nevertheless like man you shall die and fall like any prince God pronounces judgment on his sons and these divine beings to whom he entrusted the nations so God has this consul he has this like spiritual family and he doesn't rule by himself he rules with them he designates to them different nations puts them in charge of different territories to govern and to rule instead these sons they rebel against God and what they do is they make these nations worship them they become the gods for these nations they begin to teach them all of these evil ways and they rebel against God and then they even try to take Israel that's the Lord's portion and seduce them to worship them instead of worshiping Yahweh and so we see that God made very clear to the nation of Israel not to worship the host of heaven this is not just talking about physical stars and the sun this is talking about spirit beings that have rebelled against God Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19 and take heed lest you lift up your eyes to heaven and when you see the sun the moon and the stars and and watch this all the hosts of heaven so the sun the moon and the stars and then there's another there's these are physical but then there's spiritual beings the hosts of heaven you feel driven to worship them to serve them which the Lord your God has given to all the peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage so God was very clear to his children he says don't worship the hosts of heaven don't worship these other spirit beings that are in charge of other nations. Now we see later on that these sons of God, they led the nations to worship them instead of God. Instead of governing justly, they governed wrongly and therefore God in His counsel rebuked them. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20. Apostle Paul makes a reference to a verse in Deuteronomy chapter 32. So Paul quotes this in Corinthians and he says, rather the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. So when the nations you know worship idols they're not actually worshiping just wood stone they're worshiping spirit beings behind these idols these demons these spirit beings behind them now if we look at the original text in Deuteronomy chapter 32 where Paul takes the quote from it says they provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods I want you to notice not just foreign images not just these are not just kind of like lifeless these are spirit beings these were gods these were Elohims these were they were entities behind these rituals and these acts and these myths you know that mythology and you know Greek gods and Roman gods they were actually spirit beings behind them that these nations worship because these spirit beings were assigned by God to govern these nations and these spirit beings rebelled against God and instead of directing worship to one God Yahweh they directed worship toward themselves and they became these gods and so God says they provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods with abominations they provoked him to anger they sacrificed to demons not to God to the gods they did not know to the gods they did not know meaning the God of Israel was their God these lesser created spirit beings that God put in charge of the nations that rebelled against him God's like you don't even know them they're not yours to worship they're not yours you're my people to the gods they didn't know to new gods new arrivals that your fathers did not fear gods new gods demons and arrivals who are they? Now let's dive in a little bit deeper. In Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 we see God says, I will pass through the land of Egypt on the night, on that night. I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Look at this. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Every plague that was caused by Moses, it wasn't just to punish Egypt. It was also to punish spiritual beings, the gods of Egypt. It was also direct assault on the gods of Egypt who honestly enslaved the children of God. So we see that these sons of God who were put in charge of the nations 
made these nations worship them instead of worshiping God. And then God, as a result, He goes in and He begins to execute judgment on them. He rebukes them in His council. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Daniel chapter 10 verse 13, we see that, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, so angel of God says, archangel says, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Meaning this territorial being, he was set in first by God who rebelled against God. He had full right over this territory. And how I know that? Because he, he could withstand the angel, the archangel of the Lord for 21 days. Come on, we know this was not talking about a physical being because the angel, one angel come in one time and just destroyed the Syrian, uh, Syrian army. So the angels of God are very powerful. So the angel, the, one of the top angels of God, the archangel was withstood against him 21 days. Some other guy, prince, this is not talking about a physical prince. This is talking about a spirit being, a territorial being, divine being over a territory who could withstand for 21 days. And if you dive in further in Daniel chapter 10 verse 20 it, and then he said, do you know why I came to you and must I now return to fight with the prince of Persia? And when I have gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. So these spirit beings, they will take on the name of the nations, the territories they represented, governed and oversaw. We see the similar thing is applied in the New Testament. Let's dive into the New Testament that Satan tempts Jesus by saying, I can hand you the nations. In Luke chapter 4 verse 6, he says, And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I will give it to whomever I wish. And so Satan makes a very clear claim and Jesus doesn't say, oh no, that doesn't belong to you. Yes, it did. Because these nations were delivered to Satan. These nations were delivered to spirit beings. Now, the typical translation is like, oh yeah, when Adam committed sin, that's what happened. Yes, that's, that's when it started. But it's that's not the only incident when a rebellion happened against God. There's really three main rebellions that happened in the Garden of Eden. At Genesis chapter 6, when the, when the sons of God left their proper domain, and I have a separate video about that. And then in here at the Tower of Babel, when God entrusts his sons with different territories and different nations and they rebel against them. And Satan here makes a claim that all these nations, they don't belong to you. They belong to me. They've been entrusted to me. They've been delivered to me. And we see that Jesus, after he raises from the dead, he's risen from the dead. This is incredible. Before he sends disciples to the nations, have you noticed how Jesus always ministered only in the Israel territory? He barely left one time or like a few times he just left there, just touched one or two people. People and that's it. But he did not go to any other part. Even to his disciples, he did not let him go to the nations. He says to the children of Israel, to the children of Israel. Yes, first and foremost, because you know they brought the Messiah, they were carriers of the promise. But it's really because the nation of Israel was God's allotment according to Deuteronomy chapter 32. So now Jesus is risen from the dead. I want you to listen to the statement. It really is incredible. In this worldview of, of Deuteronomy chapter 32, it makes sense. Jesus says, Matthew 28 verse 19, verse 18 and 19, it says, Then Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So now that authority is no longer given to these rebellious to the sons of God who rebelled. All of the authority over all the nations now belongs to the Son of God. He didn't just take it away from them but through His death, through His resurrection, He defeated those principalities and they are now illegal in those nations. And that's why Jesus says, now you go to the nations. Wow! Not just the nation of Israel which was the, the Lord's inheritance but now all the nations. You have full authority to make disciples in those nations to one God. Why? Because the gods of those nations, the principalities, the powers are no longer legal there because all the power over all the nations has been given Jesus Christ. Come on man, this is so incredible. Come on, drop that in the chat if you're excited for that. And so that's why evangelism is so powerful. That's why we start, that's why the gospel went right away to different nations. Why? Because these sons of God, these, these spirit beings, these principalities, these princes, these gods, the Zeus, the, the Greek gods, the Roman gods and all of these gods, they lost their authority and grip now because of the death and the burial of Jesus Christ. And the good news of Jesus is going everywhere to all the nations. This is so powerful. In fact, at the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, all these heritage nations of Genesis chapter 10 were present at Acts chapter 2. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit right after Jesus' ascension. And people went back homes to those nations with the good news of Jesus Christ. Except one nation and that was Spain 
and Tarshish that was not present, that's not mentioned being present at Book of Acts outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we find it interesting that Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 15 verse 24 he says, and I have to go to Spain. I have to go pretty much to the outskirts of the western world. I have to go and preach the gospel. See Jonah was running from that place and Paul says I have to go and preach the gospel there. Why? Because every nation that was disinherited in Genesis chapter 10 now will have the good news of Jesus Christ and the good news of one God who is the creator of heaven and the earth being preached to them by the power of the Holy Spirit because these spirit beings, these principalities, now they're not legal. Jesus is legal and He wants us to fight them. It's a war, spiritual war when we're taking the gospel to these nations because they still want to lay claim of these territories. They still want to lay claim of the peoples and the nations and the tribes that live in these territories that they have been governing and that they've been you know unjustly governing, controlling and you know poisoning with their lies. And so we see that we're taking the gospel to the areas ruled by these foreign gods. According to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So when we're preaching the gospel we're not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers and against rulers of dark darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is not dealing with casting out of demons. These are deal. This is a total different layer of, of beings. These are governing beings. These are beings that are controlling nations. These are beings in the heavenlies and Paul says you know as we're going out to preach the gospel he says we are in a wrestling match because these beings still want to manipulate control and deceive people but when we're preaching the gospel we're walking with the authority that all the authority belongs to Jesus Christ hey there's a new sheriff in town his name is Jesus Christ and we are his representatives we are his ambassadors and we're going into all the nations and making disciples of all the nations why because the Lord is not just now over the nation of Israel he's over all the nations and he wants wants everyone to know Him through Jesus, through us preaching the message about Jesus. You know it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 3 that do you not know that we will judge angels? So not only we're preaching the gospel in these places now that used to be occupied and we're in conflict with these foreign gods, sons of God that you know rebelled against the Lord but we're also going to judge these angels one day. Do you not know that you're going to judge angels Paul said in Corinthians. You know that we're going to eventually replace these angels. We're going to replace eventually these sons of God, these, these spirit beings that were given places of authority. Jesus said that in Matthew 24 verse 47 He says, I surely I say to you that He will make Him a ruler over all His goods. So Jesus is not just saving us and making us His children. He's making us partners and we're going to rule together with Jesus Christ in the new world. In Matthew 25 verse 21 it says, And His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things and I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 it says, If we endure we shall also reign with Him. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 26 it says, And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. My God, this is so good. So not only, you know, we're going to heaven, we're going to be saved, but God is going to replace these sons of God that rebelled and He's going to put His redeemed, His new family over His affairs and God's going to rule together. See God always wanted to do it with the family. God didn't rule by, his, by Himself. He always entrusted to His sons and they rebelled against Him but now He has these new sons. It's you and I. We're going to rule together. He's going to give us power over the nations. And Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 it says, And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is so incredible. And so I just want to encourage you to preach the gospel. Let's make disciples of all nations. Why? Because these pretty much recap all of that. At the Tower of Babel, God disinherited these nations. They were scattered and God put His sons in charge of them. These sons, they rebelled against Him. In Psalm 82, we see that God rebuking them in His council and saying, why are you guys doing that? They tried to even seduce Israel who is God's inheritance to worship these gods. And we see this when we study the history of the world, different civilizations of different gods that they worship. These were not just made up gods. These were spirit beings that taught them to worship them and it was in direct violation to God. And now Jesus came in. He took the keys, He took the power of all of those spirit principalities of those divine beings and then He's sending His disciples, His representatives everywhere now and say, hey, I want you to fill the earth with the good news of the truth. And the, the power of the Holy Spirit is helping us to do that. Amen. I hope you were blessed by this. Hey, I want you to check out this idea or this um, concept. Um, I learned mainly from the book of Unseen Realm by Dr. Michael Heiser and 
it's been circulating you know in Christianity for a very long time so he's not necessarily original of this but he really brought it to light in his book and there's also a film called Ancient Realm the links below and so I want to give credit to them and respect them and honor for bringing this truth to light and I know that this was a blessing to you what did you learn what did you think of these truths are you going to go back in the Bible and and read through these again drop that in the comment below I would like to hear your input and your feedback. As always, don't forget to smash that like button and then share this video with somebody. Subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell so you can be so you can be reminded each time that we upload new content. And then below this video, you can see some of our merchandise. You can check it out. May this be a blessing to you.